Hi, this is Adam with Datanab, and today I'm going to be talking to you about our one-wire temperature sensors. Datanab sells a few different styles of sensors. Uh, we have the one-wire temperature sensors here, some Modbus-enabled temperature, humidity, and CO2 sensors, and 10K thermistor sensors, which are also temperature sensors. But today the focus will be on one-wire temperature sensors. Uh, we will mention the others uh, briefly just so that we can highlight the differences. Uh, what is one wire? Why do we call it one wire temperature sensors? Uh, well, first of all, just to make it clear, one wire temperature sensors don't just use a single wire. Uh, they actually use a single wire to provide power and send and receive data on, but there's always at least a second wire for uh, the ground or the return. Um, but a one wire temperature sensor is digital. Uh, it's a digital chip. It converts the temperature and then communicates back to a one wire master uh, using ones and zeros, essentially. Um, it communicates on a one-wire bus. A one-wire bus might look like this. Uh, you've got a one-wire master. Um, the physical medium for the bus is typically something like a Cat5 or a single twisted pair and a Cat5 cable. And so you've got your twisted pair come out of the master and then your sensors drop off of it. Um, so it's a, a bus topology and your sensors are wired in parallel on this bus. And there's all different sorts of one-wire sensors that you can buy, but we're specifically talking about one-wire temperature sensors today. Um, back to what a one-wire temperature sensor is. Uh, the chips can be powered on the same wire that they send and receive data on. That's what I mentioned before, and that's why we call it one-wire temperature sensors. This technology was created by Dallas Semiconductor, and uh, Dallas has since been purchased by Maxim Integrated, uh, but it's still the same stuff. Each sensor... Each one-wire sensor or one-wire chip has a identifier number, and they're all unique, and they're called ROM IDs. So each sensor has got its own ROM ID number. I'll show you a sensor here. Uh, this is just a simple little um, one-wire temperature sensor based on the DS18B20 chip. If I go to our website here, I can show you, if you expand this sensors menu, and then click on one wire sensors. We've got, you can go see all of them, or you can see the DS18B20 that are wired in our two wire configuration, the DS18B20 that are wired in three wire, and then this other chip, DS28EA00U, which are for sequence sensors. Um, but this sensor is based on the DS18B20 chip. It's got a little stainless steel probe, six millimeters in diameter and 30 millimeters long. And this specific sensor actually has the ROM ID that we were talking about right here labeled on the, uh, on the wires. And that makes it really simple and easy to, to hook it up and configure at the beginning. Uh, we also have different uh, sensors, different style of sensor here based on that same DS ATB20 chip. Same size probe. Um, this one's actually got three wires, so the chip is just wired a little bit differently. Uh, this this two-wire version is what we call parasitically powered, and in that scenario, the, the power is provided on the data line uh, through some timing. So uh, when the network is high, the, the chips have a little capacitor in them that store the charge, uh, and that's the power phase of the timing. And then when the network goes low, uh, it can send and receive data over that line. Uh, if you've got three wires, like this sensor, like this, this style, um, then you always have power on one of the lines. It's just a dedicated power line. And if you do it that way, you can actually communicate a little bit faster because you don't have to wait for the network to go low to start communicating. And you can source a little bit more power that way too. Some chips that might use more power than others would require three wires. Um, but with something like the DS18B20 chip, you can actually do two or three wire mode. Uh, and that's why we've got both of these listed on here. So you can kind of just choose whichever one you want. This these sensor, this style, has a one meter long cable with three wires and it doesn't have the ROM ID. So if you don't have the ROM ID out there, uh, the wire and wire master has to go out and search the network and these things will respond and say, hey, I'm here and this is my ID. And then you can, uh, you can configure them that way. But it's still difficult to know which sensor has what ID. So then you have to go up to them and maybe put your fingers on them or or put a heat gun on them and see uh, which of the sensors that you configured warms up in the software, and that's kind of how you how you would uh, figure out what sensor is where um, for these DS18B20 chips. This sensor with the label, obviously you can see where the label is and figure it, that, figure it out that way. So that's the little intro to the one-wire temperature sensors. 
We've actually got another style of sensor in addition to the DS18B20. If you look on our website here, we've got this DS28EA00U sequenced sensors. If I click on that, you'll just see two. And this is the three meter version. So it's got a three inch long stainless steel probe. It's eight millimeters in diameter. Um, and these, this chip actually has a couple additional pins on it. Um, you can see here, the label, we've got a data and a ground, just like with the DS18B20 chip. Sorry. We've also got a, a wire for previous and next on the other side of this label. You can see what each color is for. So our white and our yellow green wire is for the previous sensor and the next sensor. And the handy thing about this chip is that you don't need to have the ROM ID label on them to figure out what sensor is what because you can do a lo location detect function uh, with this previous and next wire. That's, that's the functionality that it provides. So it allows the master to actually discover uh, these sensors in order on the network just to make a uh, configuration and set up on the front side a little bit easier. So if you see on our website the, the two different sets of chips, that's all that this is. It adds a couple wires and it allows you to detect it uh, in order on the network. And these have become very popular with uh, our GPS customers that are putting multiple sensors in like a tractor trailer or things like that. So Calamp and some other GPS manufacturers. Uh, have support for this type of sensor. They also have support for our DS18B20 sensors, um, and a lot of those are purchased as well, but probably our biggest market for these sequence sensors is the GPS and uh, fleet monitoring uh, market. So uh, the benefits of one-wire sensors is that, uh, like based on this bus topology up here, you can wire multiple sensors on the same cable or the same bus and they can all go back to a single input on one one wire master. So, show you here. This is our bar unit 50 from Barracks. Is it Barry? Bar Barracks bar unit 50. It's got a one wire uh, connection or port here. And basically, that's just a programmable I.O. pin. And so, if you've got that, you can create a software driver for one wire. And these are three of the same types of sensors that I was showing you before. And they're all wired here to the same input. And you know, like with another style of sensor like thermistors or thermocouples or RTDs, uh, you know, you need a separate analog input for all of those. So it's actually really affordable to get a high number of sensors uh, working and monitoring with one wire because you only need a single input and a, a single cable and then you start dropping sensors off of it. Um, so that's one of the benefits. And obviously then, since you only got a single cable and a single bus and you're dropping you know, sensors off, that bus, um, you're going to need less wire and less cable. And cable isn't inexpensive anymore. And so that's another handy feature. Some of the drawbacks of one wire is if, if that bus goes down or gets shorted out or something, or even one of the sensors on the bus shorts out, it can cause all of the sensors to go offline. So uh, that's a drawback versus maybe uh, 10K thermistors, which would be all home run to their own input. If one of those sensors goes down, then only one sensor goes down. Uh, and then, since this is communicating a uh, fairly high speed over this bus digitally, um, you know, things like EMI or noise can cause communication issues. So if you've got a lot of high power equipment or magnetic forces in the area, it can cause some, some communication disruptions on the bus, depending on what type of cable you are using and how long the cable is and all those things. So. Um, so that's one wire. Now, if we were to compare one wire to our 10K thermistors, a 10K thermistor is just a simple analog resistive element that has 10,000 ohms of resistance at 25 degrees Celsius. And then as the uh, temperature increases, the resistance might decrease if you have an NTC, negative temperature coefficient thermistor, um, which are the, what we sell. Uh, we sell 10K NTC thermistors. Um, so here's an example of those. So here's three different sensors. This one is a Stainless steel probe, three inches long. Um, this is a little bead sensor. It's a tiny little thermistor element at the end of that, and then this is just what we call our mini probe. But each of these sensors is going into our AI-22. This is an Ethernet-enabled analog input module. And so in this scenario, if we wanted you know, 30 or 40 temperature sensors in a space, uh, we would need a couple of these high-density input modules. 
and each sensor would have to have a cable that goes all the way back to the input. Um, and so then you can see that the cost starts to get pretty high if you have to do a lot of sensors and they all have to be home run to their own analog input. Whereas one wire, you can put all of those sensors to a single digital I.O. pin on a single one wire master and they can share the cable. You know, so if you need to monitor temperatures around a large space, that cable can go around the space and you drop off of it with each of these sensors. So you can see how the cost savings might end up working out with one wire sensors, assuming that you can make it reliable and it's in an environment that, that won't be a problem with that. Um, so 10K thermistors are simple and easy and durable. The drawbacks is you need you know analog inputs for each temperature sensor, a separate one on the controller, and you need a lot more wire. And so that's just comparing the one wire sensors to 10K thermistor sensors. Um, and then the other style that we set at the beginning by looking at our website here, if I go back to our home page, uh, we've got some Modbus enabled sensors. And Modbus enabled sensors, those are intelligent devices that are powered. This one is a, a temperature and humidity sensor. It's Ethernet enabled, so that's an Ethernet cable and power going in the side there. And this thing talks Modbus directly. And so you know, we might have some software over here on the computer. We use Modbus Pole for a lot of Modbus communications. And so if I look here, there's the humidity uh, register, 417. So take that divided by 10, you get 41.7. There's your humidity. And over here, we've got our degrees in Fahrenheit times 10 and our degrees in Celsius times 10. So 836 divided by 10 is 83.6. And that's your temperature there. It just dropped to 83.4. And there you go. So this thing talks Modbus directly to software over the network. Obviously, uh, these Modbus sensors are a bit more expensive than a simple 10K thermistor or a simple one-wire sensor. Um, you know, but they're, you can do more things with them. Like this one also has analog outputs on it. So, the, you know, Modbus sensors, they commute, communicate on RS-485 or Ethernet. This one actually does both. It can do Modbus RTU or Modbus TCP. Uh, they need to be externally powered, uh, and the benefits are they can communicate directly with the master. This 10K thermistor here has to go into a controller, and then this controller, this analog input module, converts to Modbus and talks Modbus TCP or Modbus RTU out to a master. These one-wire sensors need a, 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 a one-wire master that then converts it to Modbus TCP. And actually, i got another Modbus pull window up here that's pulling this with Modbus TCP. And if you look, these values are degrees Celsius times 16. That's just how we wrote the program to scale the temperature. Um, and so that's why they look the way they do. Uh, here's another Modbus pole window. This is talking to our AI-22 that's got the thermistors connected. And so all of these values are in degrees Fahrenheit times 100, so a little bit more resolution. I think those are 14-bit uh, inputs, um, or 12-bit inputs, actually. You can see the third sensor is a little hotter, and it's because my hand's sitting right next to this probe. So I can hit, heat this guy up even more by rubbing my hand on it. And we can see that temperatures start to shoot up. Um, Sparring at 50, which is a one wire master, let's get back to one wire. We wrote a little one wire management app um, for the Barionet. And so that's what you're seeing here. Um, this Barionet is completely programmable, so we created an application that goes out and searches the one-wire network, and it goes out and it discovers networks and ROM IDs, and then it uh, you can assign them to certain slots, and that's what we've done here. It assigns uh, this first sensor to register one or 701, and that was this Modbus over here that we looked at, register 700 through 702. It's offset by one there, um, and so yeah. You can do uh, a lot of things with these one-wire sensors and uh, pretty affordably. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of what one-wire is all about. You can go to www.datanab.com to see all of the various one-wire sensors that we sell. Again, you can, you can look at all of them here by going to all one-wire sensors and read about them. Really, uh, the difference in a lot of these things is just uh, the way they're packaged. Like most of them use the DS18B20 chip. A couple of them use that sequence chip, the DS28EA00U. Um, but a lot of times you're looking at different cable links, different packages, things like that. But in the end, they all just kind of work the same. So uh, if you have any questions, 
don't hesitate to ask. Uh, we've you can just email us at info at datanab.com for any questions, or you can check out our website. All these things are available. These sensors are fairly affordable. I think this one is eight dollars and seventy-five cents or something. Uh, this one wire sensor with now well, let's take a look. We can go to our three wire. It's a one wire temperature sensor, but it uses three wires. Uh, it's this guy. It's eight forty-five each. Um, a little less expensive even than that one because it doesn't have the label on it. So, and a one meter cable and three wires. And then as you purchase in volume, those those uh, costs can go way down. So, hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, shoot us an email if you have any questions. Thank you.